Hello and welcome to this Blender tutorial brought to you by the Lewis Ad. My name is Emmanuel Okafo and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to set up braided hair inside Blender. As you can see from the result, um, we kind of get the essence of it. We get those scruffy look, um, but we also get this nice um, curve, uh, this kind of... Um, we have control over the direction of the braided hair. So if you want to create that with um, Blender's um, grooming tools, it's quite close to impossible. Um, so we'll be combining both the grooming tool and actually modeling um, the braided hair to achieve this look. As you can see here, um, this is the result which you should get from this process. So let's um, jump right into Blender and this is how it looks right in the viewport. So for creating um, this kind of um, pipe geometry or the... I don't know how to call this but you get what i mean um so i'm going to be using a bezier curve so you can go ahead and just place your cursor and we can add a bezier curve so the first thing i like to do when i'm working with curves is, is to change the handle type i just feel more comfortable working with um bezier curve and also i'm also going to hit v and set this to automatic and finally i'm going to set this to none so i can just see the points and just um, set it up um, next, I'm going to go to Geometry and on the um, bevel, I'm going to increase the depth slightly like this. Okay, so once I've done this, I can now just start extruding it. So importantly, you just don't want to go ahead. You just don't want to like place one here and extrude it. Uh, what you want to do is... Um, start extruding it from the um, bottom part so that you fill up the hair completely So you want to start first from somewhere like this and we can duplicate this extrude it um, Like this so the segments don't have to be equal they, uh, Some can have three some can have two so you just want to go in and manually model it into the hair and once you've done you can go ahead and convert it into geometry but right now, if we go to the wireframe, you can see we have a lot of um, geometry to work with. So you want, since you'll be working with a lot of um, hair, stra uh, hair strands, you want to make sure you're dealing with um, less geometry. So one way you can do that is you can reduce the resolution here. So if you set this to 2, um, that's fine. Also, you want to reduce the resolution here to something like 2. So you kind of optimize it so that when you convert it to geometry, you're not dealing with lots of geometry. So if we select this, we can go to Object, Convert, and Convert to Mesh. And this is now a mesh. Okay, so that's the um, first process. The next process is kind of create um, distortion and kind of um, rough it up a bit. So um, you do that with modifier. So the way I did that is to go to add a subdivision modifier just to give it more geometry to work with. And then I will add displacement. So the displacement is going to kind of create that rough scruffy look. And we can check out the settings for the displacement. So for you just play with it. So you get something that looks right. Um, you can increase this to just play with the volume. And of course the strength to um, control the intensity. Um, importantly, you want to use textures to um, displace this. So I'm using a cloud texture um, with just minimum changes to the default setting and it should get you something like this. So once you've done this, then you can go ahead and add the force to kind of give it that extra um, braided look um, with Blender hair particles. So let's go ahead and see my settings for that. So for the settings, I just added um, about 400 um, parent particles, um, the hair lengths based on what I want. Um, so I'm not going to do any grooming. I just will extrude the particles out and that's all. So um, what I would do now is to increase the strand step to add more subdivisions to the particle hair. So if you increase this, um, it will give you more children. It will give you more subdivision on each particles. So you want to also bear in mind that increasing it on the viewport display is quite different from increasing it on the render outputs like your subdivision. So you want to um, bear that in mind. So if you have the viewport strand step set to 6, um, you want to make the render step set to 6 to kind of match the viewport um, final look. So once you've done that, um, the main magic happens with the children particles. Um, so you want to use interpolated, um, of course, since you have lots of 
parent particles you don't want to have lots of children particles because um, they kind of balance each other out so 25 was a pretty decent um, point to be at okay and then for the main um, stuff I achieved that using the um, king so I am setting this the type to coils and just play with different settings till I get looking a bit rounded and just kind of fills up the hair to be able to get um, this kind of look and it doesn't really have to be perfect um, it just has to look um, scruffy enough and look natural enough and then once you render it out everything will come together to um, make sense so let's check out the shading because that also played a big factor um, to this looking quite um, like a dead dreadlock so for the um, map for the node setup um, it's quite straightforward too so let's just go to preview mode to kind of see what's happening here so I had this um, I had this geometry unwrapped using the um, smart UV project so if you select everything and hit U I'm going to I just use the smart UV project to just quickly unwrap everything and let's see how uh, everything is working I need to select the the main one Uh, let me isolate this okay so I think I'm, <laughs> I'm in the wrong um, setup okay so um, so for the first I'm, I used a wave texture to kind of get this look so nothing really fancy here. I control the rotation to kind of match um, so, so that it goes horizontally. Um, so I just set this, rotate this to 90 degrees with the Y axis. Um, of course, using the wave texture, you can play with the scale too. And then for the color, I use just one single color and also control the darkness. Um, so what, what I did with this was I used a layer weight node and using facing so you can find it here This um, layer weight node the facing it kind of give you like almost like a free, free net effect So let, let me let's see that in action just by itself. So add a new um, Node And if we use the layer weight you will see the effect of that Okay, so it's going to make the outer value all over um, any way you look at to be um, white and the inside value to be darker so you can always play with this and this is great because you can also input the normal here to even create more um, realistic looking stuff so that's what I did for this instance and kind of blended uh, it out so I plugged out one to be lighter and plugged out uh, plugged in one to be darker and then I combined it so we kind of have like um, a nice blend between the two and then that's what I use as the base color I also use subdivision um, I use subsurf modifier um, subsurf surface um, shader for this because I needed it to feel soft um, because if it's hard you'll be able to tell quickly the difference between um, the geometry hair from the particle hair so you want to make them kind of uh, match together and what does that best is using the sub um, subsurface um, shader so that's what I did to kind of bring everything together it will not be so obvious but it uh, does the trick and then for the hair I kind of use the same texture that I use for the the geometry itself and kind of same setup and then finally combine everything to be able to get this final um, look so this is basically it i know it's not like a step-by-step -step tutorial but it's it was just a fun stuff that i wanted to share with you guys so if you think this was helpful um, please like this video so you can youtube can recommend it to more blender users and if you wish to see more from me subscribe and bye bye for now see you next time